During my early to late teens, I would often jump on a bus and head for Southsea. One of my favourite fishing spots was South Parade Pier, I think mostly because it was easily accessible for me. The fishing was relatively easy, and I wasn't really kitted out or cut out for fishing on the beach. The pier acted as a natural fish holding feature, so the days spent there were usually fairly productive. In the really early days of black and white, the pier looked much different, with paddle steamers offering pleasure cruises around the Solent. Back in the late 80s when I started fishing the pier, there was a horseshoe-shaped building at the end sporting various businesses, including a snack bar, a clairvoyant, a seaside gift shop and a tattooist. Fishing was available all around the pier from the boat deck all the way back to the beach. I loved it and couldn't get enough of the pier and its regulars. In fact, I made some great friends in those early days, some of whom I'm still friends with now. Thinking back, I have wonderful memories of dried up bits of ragworm stuck to the railings, mackerel scales all over my hands, and the strong smell of vinegar. I'd get the bus from Hilsey Lido. The bus station looked much different in the early days, with its impressive Art Deco themed buildings and tram lines. It was beginning to look a bit tired when I used the bus stops, and eventually the old building was pulled down and replaced with an equally impressive animal. I'd scramble on board with my rod and a bag loaded with tackle and my lunch for the day. Half a return to South Parade Pier, please, sir. The whole journey was one of massive excitement. I guess the trip took around half an hour, maybe a bit more, with the last five minutes or so being the most exciting, knowing I was drawing close, wondering if I could catch a few. Which of my friends had beaten me to it? All these things would be going round in my head. During the summer months, the pier could get busy, with most folk fishing for mackerel with feathers. It could get heated at times, with anglers shoulder to shoulder, but for the most part, it was fairly hassle-free. I fished for mackerel just as much as anyone else. Some would use the super fresh fish as bait for larger species, but I like to take them home for the family to feast upon. Fried mackerel fillets with bread and butter was the ultimate in our house on the Saturday tea time. Revisiting now as an adult, things are much different. The pier seems smaller for one and less scary. That said, there was a time when I used to climb over the side and crawl along the boards underneath. There we could observe the shoals of smelt and watch the bass below them. The thought of my little James climbing under there would scare me to death, but I think, as a youngster, sometimes there is no fear if you really want to do something badly enough. Anyway, I wanted to relive those days, so I decided to do it all over again, take the same bus along the same route, walk from the bus stop to the pier, and settle down somewhere to see what I could catch these days. Fishing is now just allowed on the boat deck during the summer. 35 years ago, it had wooden boards underfoot, and the little stairwells where the boats would dock were still accessible. Various crazy storms over the years decimated the pier deck, and now it's comprised of a strong metal gridding. Very unforgiving when dropped items are concerned, but I can see why they made it that way, less maintenance, etc. Although the odd piece of original wooden decking does still exist here and there, small patches. We could sit on the deck and fish small hooks baited with pieces of ragworm just a few inches off the bottom and catch wrasse, pout, devilfish, pollock and even dragonettes. I was excited to find out which species were still there, which ones no longer visited and maybe perhaps if any new ones now resided under the pit. Armed with my lunch, a couple of rods, minimal tackle, half a pound of ragworm, some squid and a few sand eels, I was ready and very willing. It was quite strange walking on the mesh floor, seeing and sensing the sea below. It was like walking on a glass floor with danger lurking beneath. The day was overcast, there was a light wind, but it was a chilly one. The pier wasn't busy, with just a small handful of other anglers, but thankfully the corner I wanted to fish was free. I went my rod support and I went about setting up the rods. I laid a way sling on the decking in the hope that it would stop me from dropping things through the mesh flooring and into the sea and ultimately lost forever. The long rod was to be fished with a larger bait, sand eel and squid on a 2-0, fished on a long flowing trace on an earth bar. And although you could still get down the steps to the water, 
I brought with me a drop net just in case. The 2-0 hook was baited with a sand eel and squid wrap and cast out around 20 to 30 yards. Casting from the pier isn't really required and isn't a good idea when the pier is busy. Thankfully on this day I had half of the boat deck to myself. We all know that I struggle with my concentration levels so a bell was added to the rod tip. The light rod I could mess about with, flowing trace baited with worm for flatties and such like, and to switch it up to a dropped over the side rash rig when it took my fancy. Out went the first rod, followed closely by the second, and it was then just a case of chilling out and waiting, lapping up the atmosphere, enjoying my time fishing the pier again, and hopefully catching something. The tide wasn't flowing very much from the start, but increased as the session went on. I began receiving a few plucks on the long rod. They looked like bream bites, but with a 2-0 hook, I didn't think there was much chance of hooking up on that one. With this, I began to add small slivers of squid to the flowing trace on the light rod and cast it out to where the bream might be. It took a while, but eventually I started getting bream bites on the light rod and finally connected with one. After a spirited battle on light tackle, a lovely bream was landed. After all those years, I caught a fish from the pier. It was no record breaker, but I was more than happy with my prize. I dropped it back into the sea after admiring it for a while and recast a rod. Lunch for the day consisted of pork pies with English mustard, quite possibly my favourite fishing snack. The next few hours passed fairly uneventfully, save for a few more bream to the light rod and some missed bites on the long rod. I decided to have a go for wrasse, so clipped on my wrasse rig and dropped it over the side in various spots. But after 15 or so minutes with no bites, I decided to sack it off and return to the bream fishing. A wind sprung up. It was still a fairly gentle one, but had some chill to it, so up went the hood. The tide ran stronger, but from my vantage point I had no issue with it. The flow ran in the direction I was fishing, hence why I wanted this spot in the first place. People came and people went, fishermen, passers-by, some wanted a quick chat, some took selfies, but all of them enjoyed the pier, as I did. I arrived at the pier at around 9.30am and at 3pm it was time for me to think about packing away, bidding the pier farewell and getting back to the bus stop. It had been a lovely day. The fishing didn't set the world alight, but it wasn't really about that. On the way back I stopped at various places for that obligatory look into the depths, something only us anglers will understand. Up the stairs, through the funfair, and on towards the bay. If I was one for taking fish home, I could have had a decent feast with some of the bream I caught, but they were all returned safely. I will definitely revisit the pier again soon, maybe next time I'll take a seat. Standing up all day is a young person's sport. <laughs>